Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Turtle Biscuit here. Here's a vlog for you. I mentioned that once I was sure what was going on, I would tell people about the health issue that I've been having, and I'm going to do just that. This doesn't have much to do with video games, but it does have, hopefully, a fairly important message for pretty much everybody, because there is the potential that anybody at any time could be affected by this. Now, I will put a warning before I talk about this. This is going to be pretty gratuitous. And as a result, we're going to be talking about a lot of things that people don't like to talk about. These are the kind of things that are considered embarrassing, and they're not discussed in polite company. And frankly, that's part of the problem. And it's killing people. I'm hoping that by telling you guys this, I will be able to raise some awareness and, who knows, maybe prevent something horrible happening to any one of you. This is a topic that doesn't get discussed much, and as a direct result, people die from this condition without ever even getting it checked. So. Stomach strong? Good, let's talk about it. So, I have what is right now either a precancerous or already cancerous mass inside my colon. It is about two centimeters in diameter, and it has been causing me, most likely for the past year and a half at least, various issues in the going to the toilet area, as you might imagine started off probably about a year and a half ago when my sort of toilet habits kind of changed. It was a bit weird because you know, I used to never really have any issues there. But I started going more often. I was like, huh, I'm crapping more than I'm used to here. And you know, it, it seems a bit loose. You know, not exactly what one, anyone wants to hear. And two, you really want to share with anybody. But that's a real part of the problem. And again, this is why this condition can sneak up on you because people are not talking about it and they're not willing to actually go and get it checked. So about three or four months ago, I started noticing bleeding, basically blood in the stool, and I was also noticing mucus, you know, when I went to go to the bathroom. Obviously very concerning. And I'd put all of this stuff off for a while because the initial change I had just written off as, oh, I'm stressed and I'm probably not eating very well. So that's what's causing this problem. But things got worse. And once I started seeing, you know, regular blood in the stool, I'm saying, oh god, right, this is, this is pretty bad. Even then, I kind of held off on it because I thought, oh, you know, maybe it's just something like hemorrhoids, you know, there's nothing particularly serious going on there, I'm, sh I'm sure it's fine. But eventually, I got everything sorted out and I went to my GP and she referred me to a gastroenterologist. And I had to do a bunch of really horrible, embarrassing stuff, in including, of course, stool samples, which I can tell you is not fun to do at home with the home kit that they give you. Good Lord. The results came back from the lab and they said we have detected white blood cells, which can only mean one of a few things. One of those things is a condition called IBD, which consists of actually two separate things, either Crohn's disease, which you've probably heard of, or ulcerative colitis, which is less well known, but actually often more common. And these are chronic conditions, they don't go away, you know, they can be treated, they can be made better, but they can't be completely cured, unless you remove the entire bowel, which is not generally a good thing. And I was convinced at that point I have ulcerative colitis. I'm pretty sure I didn't have Crohn's because there's some very outward symptoms that I didn't have. So I'm like, oh, it's just ulcerative colitis. But there's something in the back of my mind that says, you know, this also shares a lot of symptoms with bowel cancer. And I have a bit of a history in the family. Two of my grandparents had bowel cancer at around age 75. It, it isn't what killed them, but they did have it. So I was always a little bit wary of that being a possibility. So how do they find out what you've got down there? How do you think? They stick a camera up your ass. It's as simple as that. You get a colonoscopy. And honestly, that was intimidating as all hell. And it was dumb for me to even think that it was intimidating because it, it really, it's nothing. It is absolutely nothing, especially not in the US. They knock you out entirely for the whole thing. You don't even know it's happening. It's just done. The prep for it was what was worse. You have to drink some horrible stuff to clean out your system, and you can imagine exactly what that involves. And once you've eventually done that and starved yourself basically for two days, you go in, you get your colonoscopy done, you you know, you lie down on the hospital bed, they put an IV into you, you know, they put you up to oxygen, and they knock you out of this, this stuff that just knocks you out in two seconds. It's incredible. Then you wake up, you're a little bit groggy, and needless to say, you're probably bleeding out your ass. That's the way that it goes. And I saw the results, and there was just this... I said, look, you've got this mass here. It's you know, two centimeters in diameter. This is this is not normal. We need to find out what this is. I'm like, well, you know, what causes this? And he's like, well, 
The kind of thing that causes this sort of growth is colon cancer. And we need to find out. We've got to be sure. Uh, he sent the biopsies off, and the biopsies came back saying this is a high-grade dysplasia, which is symptomatic of cancer, but it wasn't 100% confirmed. The problem is, with a mass of that size, the cancer cells can be very much inside. They can be at the core of it, and they haven't metastasized. They haven't actually, like, got out yet. So, as a result... They didn't want to cut into the damn thing for obvious reasons because that could actually cause whatever this is to spread. So they sent me in for a CT scan and the CT scan results just came back and they confirmed that it has not spread. There is no sign of cancer anywhere else in the bowel and the colon anywhere. And whatever this is, it's self-contained and they can get it out. So hopefully over the next few weeks, I'll be scheduled for surgery after doing a consultation and they will cut that out of me and I shall hopefully be fine. Although I'll be having regular checkups, needless to say, probably on a yearly basis because, hey, you know, I'm genetically susceptible to that kind of cancer. So basically what I'm saying is I if I don't already have cancer, I will have cancer if this is not dealt with. And I'm very fortunate that we caught it early enough. Still not out of the woods. You know, it may very well be that something was hiding and that this gets worse. But you know, the doctors are very optimistic that we've caught it early enough. We can get it out and that will be that. So why am I telling you all of this? Because I usually don't share this kind of stuff with you. The reason I'm telling you this is because I'm a fucking idiot. And I am a fucking idiot because I did not get this checked out sooner. I should, while I was in the UK, you know, when I was, you know, started kind of having these toilet issues, these GI problems, I should have gone to the doctor pretty much immediately. And I didn't. Because I said to myself, oh, you know, that's embarrassing. I don't want to talk about that. It'll just go away on its own. Then I came to the US and I was dealing with everything there and getting my medical insurance sorted out. And I, I put it off and I put it off and I put it off. And you know what? I almost got myself killed. And who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm certainly at risk at this point, and I'm probably going to have to be checked out the rest of my life. Which I knew would happen eventually. I just wasn't expecting it to happen at 29. And let's be honest, who the hell does expect something like that to happen at that age? Because I think for a lot of people, certainly for me, bowel cancer is the kind of thing that you think about in old people. You know, oh, you're 70. Okay, you know, you're at risk of bowel cancer. You, you need to get that checked out, you know, same as, you know, having prostate exams and things like that. You know, it's an old man's thing. It's not. It isn't. For God's sake, there are 17-year-olds who have died of this particular disease. It is actually one of the biggest killers in both the US and the UK. It is one of the most common cancers, and it goes untreated because people are embarrassed to go and get it checked out. They're intimidated by the idea of something like a colonoscopy. They just don't want to talk about things like their bowel movements. I get that. I understand. But I am a fucking idiot. Because I didn't go sooner, because I was embarrassed by that, because I put it off, because I made excuses. I, I don't want other people to go through what I'm currently going through. I got lucky, by the sounds of it, that we caught it just in time. If I had kept going on like this, it would have probably developed into full-on bowel cancer and then god knows where i'd be so here's what i'm saying to you. If you have had those kind of symptoms, if something unusual is going on in that regard, Look up the symptoms. If they match up, God's sake, go get yourself checked. It is not a difficult procedure. Not only is it going to save you untold discomfort later on, but it can quite literally save your life. And don't be afraid to talk to a doctor about this stuff. This applies to a bunch of other things as well. You know, maybe sexual problems and things like that. Talk to your doctor about it. It's not like they haven't heard it a hundred times before. It is literally impossible to embarrass a doctor, especially not a gastroenterologist. This is what they do for a living. Please, please do not be an idiot like me. Please get it checked if you think that you have these kind of problems. It's a little bit of discomfort in the cleanse that you have to do before it. A bit of anesthesia, a bit of a sore throat from the O2 that they put down here, and that's it. And it could save your life. So, again, please, please, please do not put it off the way that I did. Uh, I've put my life at risk. I've put my family at risk. I've put myself through a year plus of discomfort and inconvenience and sometimes pain because I was stubborn and didn't want to go to the doctor and have an embarrassing procedure done. 
please, please take care of yourselves. There is absolutely nothing to be embarrassed about, and just be aware that this is not a disease that just kills 75-year-old men. No, absolutely not. Cancer is not something that we like to talk about. It's scary, it's terrifying, you know, it's the great evil when it comes to medical science right now. But the reality of it is, a lot of it is treatable, and if caught early, you can head it off at the pass. And unfortunately, once it gets too far, there is no going back. You don't get a do-over. A tiny bit of temporary embarrassment and discomfort is nothing compared to the value of your life. So please, don't be a moron like me. If there's something wrong, go to the damn doctor. Do not suffer in silence and hope that it will go away, because it might not. And then it might be too late. <sighs> well, can't be embarrassed about that anymore. I pretty much just told the entire internet about my embarrassing problem. Done. Over with. I'll get this damn thing cut out and I will be absolutely fine. No joke or mockery that anyone could possibly make is even as close to important as the fact that if just one person goes and gets this checked and heads this off at the pass as a result of me saying this, then everything I just did is completely worthwhile. There's a reason why the UK is on a big binge lately about raising bowel cancer awareness, because it's a real thing and it kills a lot of people and it doesn't have to. It's an important issue needed to be shared. All right, well, that explains a lot of what's been going on over the last few months, why I've not been doing a lot of traveling. Obviously, there's been a lot of discomfort related to that. Don't want to be sitting down for too long, for fairly obvious reasons. If you were hoping to hear about video games, not today. Uh, I think that that needed a video of its own to explain there. And hopefully that answers all your questions, because I know I've been very evasive about this over the last few months, and thank you to everyone that was concerned. It is very much appreciated. Just know that we're on top of it, and we should be able to get it handled. My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for listening to this, and I ideally hope it was of some use to you, even if it may have grossed you out. Trust me, I'm not so concerned about you being grossed out as I am about you being alive, well, and healthy. I'll see you next time.